A lot of our ornament girl patterns require you to have pole markings on either side of your ball. Pole markings are these little dots, like little imprints on either half of your ball. They are usually sitting in between of this line that goes around the circumference of the ball. We like to call that the equator line. And we like to use these markings to indicate the beginnings of either half of the pattern. Now, a lot of the foam balls that you can find in craft stores or online do have these markings, including the ones that we sell in the Ornament Girls shop. But what do you do if the ball that you're using does not have these markings? In this video, our Ornament Girl designer, Monica, is going to show you how you can find your own two poles, even if they are not already on your ball. When I want to make an ornament, if I happen to be working with some foam that has no marks on it whatsoever, like this rough styrofoam ball here on the left, or if I happen to be working with a polystyrene type of ball, like the soft foam balls that the ornament girl carries in her supply shop, and those marks are off just a little bit, then I can use a really easy method to find the pole markings and the equator line if I need it in a very easy way without having to measure anything. In addition to your foam ball, some things that you'll need to have on hand in order to do this are some pins. You'll just need a few straight pins. I also like to have, though it's not required, some pearl head pins like these, and that's because they're just a little bit larger and so they're a little bit easier to work with, I think. You'll also need something like a pencil or a pen, you know, something to mark your foam with. If I happen to be using the rough styrofoam like I'll be demonstrating in just a moment, I usually prefer a Sharpie because I feel like it's just a little easier to work with. Not the really thin, narrow Sharpies, but the larger, regular size Sharpies. Those seem to work really great for me. You're also going to need a long strip of ribbon, something that's really narrow, like an eighth of an inch. This happens to be an eighth of an inch grow grain ribbon, and it's black. I like black because you can see the contrast between the black ribbon and the white foam really easily. I like to use grow grain ribbon because I feel like it doesn't fray quite as badly as other types of ribbon like satin ribbon might. Also, because it's flat, it stays put a little better than something like string might that might sort of move around on the foam as I'm working. And this piece of ribbon is about 33 inches or so long. I just keep it in with my supplies and just reuse it over and over. So you might find that this is a really helpful tool that you can keep in your supplies for ornament making. So let's get started first by talking about how to find the poles in the equator on a ball that has absolutely no markings whatsoever. All right, first things first, let's get started by indicating any spot on our foam ball that we want to be the top of our ornament. So I'm just gonna pick a random location and do a little dot right there with my pen or pencil, Sharpie. And now that is officially one of the poles on my ornament. So that gives us a starting point. Now I'm going to take one of those pearl head pins and just place it right through the end of my ribbon, just like that, and now pin it directly into that dot. Now don't place it down all the way, you want it to be standing up just a little bit. And now take your ribbon and you want it to be flat down against the foam and just hold it out tightly so that it's nice and straight and then just begin to wrap it all the way around your foam ball. Now try to get it as straight as you can, but it's okay if it's a little bit off. We're going to be making adjustments later. So just try to do your best and come right back to your starting point. Also keep in mind that these foam balls are not 100% perfect. You know, they're gonna be off just a little bit here and there. They may not be absolute perfect spheres. So we're just gonna do our best to try to get the straightest lines we can, but it's okay if they're just a little bit off. We're just looking to make some basic marks, even if they're just a hair off here or there, that's okay. We'll be in the neighborhood and that's good enough. So now that we've reached our top point, go ahead and rotate your foam ball so that that ribbon catches on that pin. And you're going to twist it 90 degrees. So now we are perpendicular to our first lines that we did, and we're going to continue to wrap the other way. So keep going until they crisscross each other at the bottom here. Or I guess it's the bottom, it's one of the other poles. That's where your other pole is going to be. And come up right back to your starting point again. And now you can pin the ribbon in place. You want to place that pin right beside the previous pin, but this time I'm just using a regular pin and I'm going to press it down all the way. And now take a look at your ribbon lines and it's time to make some adjustments. What you're looking for is to have four equal segments when you look at those perpendicular crisscross lines at the top and at the bottom. And mine look just a little bit off. I look like I have a couple of quadrants here that are small and then a couple that are large. 
So I'm going to move these ribbon lines around. It's a little hard with rough foam because you know that rough foam likes to just grab that ribbon and it's hard to move it with your fingers. So here's a little tip. I like to take another pearl head pin like this because again, they're a little larger and I will just slip it right in between the ribbon and the foam. You're not wanting to pierce through anything. You're just wanting it to be able to sit there right between the ribbon and the foam and then use that pin to coax that ribbon over where you want it. So I will just run my pin up and down, just back and forth in order to get that ribbon line where I want it. Now I will let you know that with rough foam, sometimes just little bitty pieces of the foam will come off while you're adjusting your ribbon lines. And also it does make some noise, so just be aware of that. It can be a little bit noisy depending on how much adjusting you need to do with those lines. So I am done making adjustments with my ribbon lines. I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. I've got pretty much four equal quadrants. It might be a little bit off, but you know, we're not looking for absolute perfection. We're just looking to get in the general neighborhood of where that pole needs to be. So now that I have the top pole identified and the bottom pole is right there where the lines crisscross, I don't want those ribbon lines to shift around. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a regular pin and just place it right through the crisscross. This isn't quite so important on rough foam because you know the rough foam doesn't really let those ribbon lines move very easily, but it's really important on the smoother type of foam balls because boy, those let the ribbon just slide all over the place. So it's important to put that pin there because you're going to take your pen or pencil or marker and we're going to draw some lines just about a half an inch, inch off of that center crisscross point because when the ribbon is removed, then we're not going to know where that crisscross point was unless we give ourselves some sort of indication of where it was. So these little marks are gonna tell us, oh yeah, that is where the bottom crisscrossed. Now, if you just need to know where the top pole is and the bottom pole is, and you do not need an equator line, then you are good to go. You can take off your ribbon, you can take off the pins, and you are ready to make your ornament. But if you are needing to have an equator line for your design, whatever pattern you're doing, then let's go ahead and designate where that equator line is. So take your ribbon, you have this excess hanging off here, and right where you stopped, where the pin was, just go ahead and continue that ribbon just as if you didn't stop right there. You're just gonna continue wrapping it around right on top of that ribbon that's underneath until you reach that bottom crisscross point. And when you reach that crisscross point, just take your thumb and your forefinger and you wanna place it right where that bottom pin is. That's gonna be sort of your temporary marker of where that point is. And now the distance here from this top pin here to where your thumb and forefinger are, that is the distance from the top of the ball to the bottom of the ball. So half of this distance would be where the equator line is. So let's just fold this in half. Just take your thumb and forefinger and you're gonna fold this ribbon on top of itself. Just make a little loop. You're just gonna come around to the top and that spot where your fingers are, just place it directly on top of that pin that's at the top and hold it in place. You can pin it if you like. I usually just hold it really tightly. Don't let it move. And now you have that little loop. If we flatten that loop down, that's gonna tell us where the halfway point is. So I just like to take, again, a pearl head pin. I place it into that loop and flatten that loop against the ball. And right there is where my equator line should be, right there. So how do we make it stay right there? Well, I'm going to pin it down, but I'm only gonna pin the bottom part of that loop. I don't want to pin the top part. Just keep your pin right where that little fold is in the ribbon itself. You just want to place it into the very corner right where that fold is, but only the bottom layer of the loop is what you're trying to pin. So I've just stood my pin upright and now the bottom of that loop is secure. So now we know that right here is where the equator line should be, but we don't yet have an equator. So we are going to give ourselves one. Just take your ribbon once again, and you're just going to begin wrapping it around perpendicular to all the other ribbon lines. Just wrap it all the way around. As you crisscross over all the other lines, see how it's creating those perpendicular lines? So nice. Try to keep it as straight as you can and come back to your starting point and pin it again. So now we have an artificial equator line. Go ahead and straighten it out if you need to. Once again, like I mentioned, you can take a pearl head pin and you can run it between the ribbon and 
the foam if you need to, make some adjustments. But if it looks pretty straight, then you can move on to the next step, which is drawing more lines. So just like we did on the bottom of the ornament, we're going to draw some lines so that when the ribbon is removed, we won't forget where that equator line was. So I'm taking my marker and I'm just gonna go ahead and run it along the top and the bottom of my little ribbon equator line here. And of course that's because we can't draw the exact equator line because that's right where the ribbon is. <laughs> so we're just gonna draw on the top and the bottom and when we remove the ribbon, we're gonna know that the real equator line is right between those. All done with the lines and now you can remove all the pins and all the ribbon. So there is our top point where we started. There is our new equator line. It's right between those lines we drew. And our bottom point, we know where that is, except it's not super accurate because we just know where the crisscross was. If you want to know the exact dot of where your pole is there, you can just use your marker or your pin and just crisscross those and right in the very center, that's where your pole is. So we have a bottom pole, we have a top pole, we have an equator line, and we are ready to make our ornament. Now what about a ball that has some marks on it or maybe just an equator line but perhaps the pole markings are not there or they may be off quite a bit. It is really nice if you have the equator line as a starting point but nothing says that you have to use the equator line just because it's there. You can use any point on your ball as the pole. It can be you know any spot that you need it to be and you can just make your own marks just like I showed you on that previous ball where we started from scratch and had no marks whatsoever. So like I said, nothing says you have to use the equator line as the equator line. In fact, if I sometimes am making an ornament and I have had to unpin things and repin things and pull them out again, sometimes your foam will begin to look like Swiss cheese right there on one of the poles where you've started. And it's a shame because then you struggle with, well, do I just keep going? And is my ornament going to even look okay? Because I reuse that same spot over and over. I like to take those balls that have been misused a little bit and I'll just designate some other spot anywhere on the ball as my new starting point and I'll make my new marks just in the same way that I showed you with the previous ball and that way I can go ahead and use that ball and it's totally usable it's just that that one spot was not very pretty anymore and it made it a little difficult to get everything aligned so you can make any spot on your ball your pole and then go from there draw your other pole on the opposite side and make your own equator line. But if you happen to have a ball like this, like I mentioned, where you do have an equator line, I'll show you my favorite thing to do if I don't know where the poles are or they're off. I will actually use my equator line as my starting point to locate those different places on my ball. So I will come to this equator line and I'll make a mark anywhere on it. And suddenly that is now my top pole of my foam ball. And just like I showed before, I will place the pin through the ribbon and place that pin into the ball right on that dot. It's kind of squeaky, sorry. And now I will wrap it around, right? And this is so convenient because we now have a line, that equator line that we can follow all the way around the ball. And we know that it's gonna be perfectly straight because we're following the line. And when you reach your starting point again, you are going to rotate your ball so that that ribbon catches on the pin and begin to wrap it the opposite direction. Remember the ribbon lines are gonna crisscross right there. Continue up to where you started and pin your ribbon right beside that previous pin. And now we're going to adjust those ribbon lines if needed so that everything is nice and straight. Actually, my ribbon lines are looking pretty straight, so I don't think I'm even going to have to do any adjustments whatsoever. But I am going to go ahead and place a pin here in that bottom crisscross point because I don't want these ribbons sliding around. That's the thing about these smooth type of foam balls. They allow the ribbon to slide around a little easier, and I don't want that to happen because I'm going to go ahead and mark right along those ribbon lines so that I will know where they crisscrossed each other when I take them away. Here we go, so that is my bottom pole. I've got my top pole marked and now I need a brand new equator line because I no longer have one. I've used it when I wrapped the ribbon around it. So let's figure out what point is halfway between the bottom pole and the top pole. It's gonna be somewhere right in here. 
So to find that distance, I'm going to once again take my ribbon, run it from that top pin, running it right down to my bottom pin, and I'm going to mark that spot where it reaches that bottom pin with my thumb and forefinger. That is the distance from the top to the bottom, and I'm just going to fold that over on itself, folding it in half, creating a loop. I'm bringing my thumb and forefinger right up to that spot where that pin is, and I'm just going to hold it in place there really tightly. You don't want to let it go. And then take a pin, I'm using this pearl head pin, and I'm going to insert it in that loop and just flatten it down. And that is where my equator line is going to be. Now I want to get my pin right down, right where that little fold is, but I'm only going to pierce through the bottom layer of the loop. And now I can let it go. So that's the halfway point. This is where my equator line needs to run, so I'm going to go ahead and just use my ribbon and create a brand new equator line all the way around the ball. Remember, you want those to be perpendicular as you crisscross those previous ribbon lines. And come back to your starting point and pin it again. Make sure those lines are as straight as you can get them. It's really nice with this softer foam and the smooth type of foam balls because you can just move them around a little bit easier. And when everything looks like it's nice and straight, if you need to, go ahead and pin those spots where they're crisscrossing or you can just hold them and take your pen or your marker and draw a line on both sides of your brand new equator line because since the ribbon is actually directly where your equator line it's going to be. We don't want to move the ribbon out of the way, we just want to mark above and below so that we'll know the spot in between is where the equator line is. And then remove all the pins and the ribbon. And now just like magic you have a new top pole you have a bottom pole, which you can better identify by doing a little cross right there. And right where they crisscross that is your pole. Top, bottom, and equator line are marked, and I'm ready to make my ornament.